the practice of lightly burning banana leaves before using them in the preparation of certain delicacies such as binalay is a traditional cooking technique in some cultures. While there may not be a specific scientific explanation for this practice, here are some potential reasons. For sanitization, Burning the banana leaves can help sanitize them by killing any potential bacteria or microorganisms present on the surface. The heat from the burning process may help eliminate some of these contaminants, providing a cleaner surface for food preparation. For flavor enhancement, burning the banana leaves can impart a unique smoky aroma and flavor to the food. This flavor enhancement is similar to grilling or smoking food, where the burning process releases compounds that add a distinct taste profile to the dish. For structural integrity, burning the banana leaves briefly can also help make them more pliable and easier to work with. The heat can soften the leaves slightly, making them more flexible and less likely to tear or break when wrapped around the food. Pressing hard on a coconut helps extract its milk due to the structure of the coconut's flesh and its cellular composition. When you apply pressure, the coconut's fibrous cells break down, releasing the liquid trapped within the coconut meat. This process allows the milk to be separated from the solid parts of the coconut, resulting in a creamy, nutritious liquid that can be used for various culinary purposes. Coconut milk is an emulsion of water and oil that naturally occurs within the coconut flesh. It contains water, coconut oil, proteins, and other components. When heated, the water in the coconut milk starts to evaporate due to the increased temperature. As the water evaporates, the concentration of coconut oil in the remaining liquid increases. The process of heating coconut milk promotes the breakdown of the emulsion, causing the oil to separate from the water and other components. As the water continues to evaporate, the coconut oil becomes more concentrated and eventually starts to collect on the surface of the liquid. Once enough water has evaporated and the temperature is sufficiently high, the coconut oil can be scooped out or separated from the remaining liquid. This is the point at which coconut milk turns into a coconut oil. The science behind this transformation is mainly a result of the differences in boiling points and the properties of water and oil. The water evaporates at a lower temperature compared to the coconut oil, allowing the oil to remain in a liquid state while the water is removed as vapor. When coconut milk is heated and boiled, the water evaporates, leaving behind the coconut oil and coconut milk solids. The solids begin to separate from the oil and undergo a process called caramelization due to the heat and prolonged cooking. The coconut milk solids gradually turn golden brown as the sugars in the coconut milk undergo milliard reactions. 
these reactions occur between amino acids and reducing sugars present in the coconut milk solids, resulting in the characteristic browning and flavor development of the lattic. Glutinous flour, also known as sticky rice flour or sweet rice flour, contains a type of starch called amylopectin. When this flour is boiled, the amylopectin molecules undergo a process known as gelatinization, which is responsible for the softening of the flour. Here's a scientific explanation for why this happens. Starch structure. Starch is a complex carbohydrate made up of glucose molecules. It consists of two main components, amylose and amylopectin. Amylose forms a linear chain while amylopectin has a branchy structure. Amylopectin and water. When glutinous flour is mixed with water and heated, the water molecules start to penetrate the starch granules. Amylopectin molecules have more exposed branches compared to amylose, allowing water molecules to access the starch structure more easily. Gelatinization As the temperature rises, the water molecules disrupt the hydrogen bonds between the starch molecules, causing the starch granules to swell. The amylopectin molecules absorb water and undergo a physical change called gelatinization. This process results in the thickening and softening of the glutinous flour. Molecular reorganization During gelatinization, the starch molecules reorganize and form a network of interconnected chains. This network traps water molecules, forming a gel-like consistency. The trap water helps to hydrate the starch and contributes to the soft texture of the boiled glutinous flour. Amylopectin retrogradation After boiling, as the glutinous flour cools down, the gelatinized amylopectin undergoes retrogradation. Retrogradation is the process where the starch chains reassociate and rearrange themselves, leading to the formation of a more rigid and firm structure. This retrogradation process is responsible for the firming and solidifying of the boiled glutinous flour as it cools. In summary, the softening of glutinous flour when boiled is primarily due to the gelatinization of amylopectin, which forms a gel-like structure. Upon cooling, retrogradation occurs, leading to a firmer texture.